Ever wondered why understanding the OSI layers and networking is crucial? Well, let's dive into it. The Open Systems Interconnection, or OSI model, is more than just a networking blueprint. It's like the universal language of networking, enabling different technologies to communicate effectively. Picture this. You're at a bustling international airport where people from all over the globe are communicating in various languages. The airport, much like the OSI model, serves as a common ground, enabling all these diverse languages to interact seamlessly, from the flight announcements to the check-in counters. In the grand scheme of networking, the OSI model plays a similar role. It's a seven-layered framework that standardizes the functions of a communication system. Each layer has a specific role, from the physical transmission of data to the presentation and management of this data in a way that the user can understand and utilize. When you're troubleshooting network issues, understanding the OSI layers is like having a detailed map. You can pinpoint where the problem might be occurring, whether it's at the physical layer with a faulty cable, or at the network layer where a router might be misbehaving. But it's not just about fixing problems. The OSI model is also about optimizing communication. It ensures that data is packaged and transported efficiently, regardless of the devices or technologies being used. Whether you're sending an email from your smartphone or streaming a movie on your smart TV, the OSI model is working behind the scenes, making sure your data gets where it needs to go. And let's not forget about security. Each layer of the OSI model presents its own unique security challenges, from protecting the physical infrastructure to securing the data itself. Understanding these layers can help you build a more secure network. So the OSI model isn't just a theoretical concept, it's a practical tool for anyone working with networks. The OSI model consists of seven layers. We start at the bottom with the physical layer. This foundational layer is all about the nitty gritty the physical aspects of data transmission. It's where the rubber meets the road in the world of networking. The physical layer is concerned with hardware devices such as routers, switches, network interface cards, and even the cables that connect these devices. But it's not just about the tangible components. The physical layer also handles the binary transmission of data. It's here that data packets are converted into electrical or optical signals, ready to travel across the network. It's like a busy shipping dock, where data is packaged and prepared for its journey. Yet as essential as it is, the physical layer is just the beginning. It provides the infrastructure, the backbone, the launching pad for data transmission. The physical layer lays the groundwork, but it's just the first step in the process. Moving up, the second layer is the data link layer. Now this layer is a bit like a reliable postman. It's responsible for transferring data between network nodes, ensuring that the data arrives at the correct destination and in the right order. Here's where it gets interesting. The data link layer also has a knack for spotting errors. Think of it like a detective, examining the information passed on from the physical layer. It's always on the lookout for issues that may have occurred during transmission. These issues could be anything from lost data packets to interference and distortion, once our detective, the data link layer, finds these errors, it doesn't just stop there. It makes sure that the errors are corrected. This layer uses sophisticated techniques like checksums and acknowledgements to ensure the data is delivered error-free and in a way that makes sense. The data link layer ensures that data is delivered error-free from one node to another. Next up, we reach the network layer. This is the third layer in our OSI model journey, and it's all about direction. Think of it as the GPS of data transmission, guiding data packets to their correct destination. The network layer has a critical role in managing network connections. It holds the responsibility for the logical addressing of hosts, and more importantly, the routing and relaying of packets through an entire network. It's like a traffic control system for data, ensuring that packets don't get lost in the complex web of networks. The network layer also takes care of fragmentation and reassembly. If a data packet is too large for transmission, the network layer breaks it down into smaller, more manageable chunks. Once these reach their destination, the network layer reassembles them back into the original data packet. So, 
Think of the network layer as your data's personal tour guide, helping it navigate through the maze of the network until it reaches its final destination. The network layer ensures data packets find their way through the complex web of networks. We're halfway there with the transport layer. This layer is a critical part of the OSI model, responsible for managing end-to-end -end message transmission in a network. Think of it as the postal worker of the networking world. It ensures that data gets from point A to point B in a reliable and orderly fashion. It's the transport layer that provides services such as connection-oriented communication, reliability, flow control, and multiplexing. Connection-oriented communication means establishing a virtual path between the source and destination before transferring data. Reliability is achieved through error detection and correction mechanisms. Flow control prevents the sender from overwhelming the receiver with data, while multiplexing allows multiple applications to send and receive data over the network simultaneously. In essence, the transport layer is like a reliable postman, ensuring that every piece of data, or letter, if you will, reaches its destination intact and on time. The transport layer gives us reliable, transparent transfer of data between end systems, or the top three layers of the OSI model are the session, presentation, and application layers. Let's delve into these final layers, which act as the bridge between the network and the user's software applications. Starting with the session layer, this is the fifth layer in the OSI model. Its primary role is to establish, manage, and terminate connections or sessions between applications on each end of the communication. Think of it as a facilitator for conversation, setting up the meeting, managing the exchange, and then closing the discussion when it's done. The session layer ensures that these conversations are properly synchronized and orderly, so data doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Moving up a notch, we have the presentation layer, layer 6. Now this layer is a bit of a translator. It's responsible for transforming data into a format that the application layer can understand. The presentation layer deals with data compression and encryption, ensuring that data is readable and secure. So, in essence, it takes the raw data from the session layer and translates it into a format that the software applications can comprehend. And finally, the seventh and topmost layer of the OSI model, the application layer. This layer is the closest to the user and interacts directly with the software applications. It provides network services to these applications, like email, file transfer, and web browsing. It's the layer that allows you to send an email, transfer a file, or open a web page. It's essentially the interface between the network and the software applications. In summary, these top three layers each play a crucial role in data communication. The session layer sets up and manages conversations, the presentation layer transforms data formats, and the application layer interacts directly with software applications providing network services. Together, they ensure that communication over a network is smooth, efficient, and user-friendly. These top layers complete the OSI model, providing the interface between the network and the user's software applications. So we've walked through all seven layers of the OSI model, Let's quickly recap our journey through the intricate maze of the OSI model. Starting from the bottom, we have the physical layer. Acting as the foundation, it's the layer that handles the raw, physical transmission of data in the form of bits across the network. Moving up, we reach the data link layer, which gives structure to the raw data by packaging it into frames. It also manages error detection and correction, ensuring data integrity. Next, we ascend to the network layer. This is where data gets its roadmap, with IP addresses guiding it towards its destination. It's also the layer responsible for routing and handling traffic congestion. The fourth layer is the transport layer, the reliable postman of our network. It ensures data arrives at its destination error-free and in the right sequence. It's also where data gets broken down into smaller packets for easier transmission, we then reach the session layer, which establishes, manages, and terminates the connection between the communicating devices. It's like the conductor of an orchestra, ensuring all instruments play in harmony. The sixth layer, 
the presentation layer, translates the data into a format that the application layer can understand. It's also where data encryption and compression occur, ensuring data security and efficient transmission. Finally, at the top, we have the application layer. This is where the magic happens, where the user interacts with the network. It provides network services to the applications we use every day, like our web browsers and email clients. Each layer of the OSI model plays a vital role in the process of data transmission. They work together like a well-oiled machine, ensuring that our data gets from point A to point B smoothly and efficiently. Understanding the OSI model is like having a roadmap for data transmission, making the complex world of networking a lot more navigable. And with that, we conclude our journey through the OSI model.